so it's currently pretty early in the morning so I'm trying not to talk too loud um, of course I sleep pretty late because I'm doing other stuff other than actually development um, a few meetings we have um, with Airbus that are pretty late um, so most of the time I'm actually pretty much awake until 5am anyway and then a little remainder of time I'm either playing uh, Lumia Legacy or TF2 or Train Sim or just developing um, so I have a Tagita update I need to get done by the end of this weekend once Tagita is done I want to get Fiorina also moving it's not going to obviously have the functions like fuel stuff and that because well who knows we probably will but um, that fuel stuff etc etc won't be anything special like yeah, I'm not going to make it pump any fuel anytime soon that's actually part of an add-on that I need to work on on this plane and actually part of the I did tell people about the weight and fuel add-on part of that funny enough is actually implemented in the A350 and by that I mean actually how it affects the weight so stupid me forgot that when you make a realistic kit you also forget you need to remember that center of gravity is very essential to the plane and you see the problem with what I've done and I didn't think about it and it looks like it's come it's gonna probably bite me back um, is when I was looking at ch um, pitch trimming because I've been flying the A350 and sometimes I notice when I set the plane to its neutral point so if you're using mouse mode if you put the plane your, your cursor um, you put your mouse cursor in the middle, you can see in blue tide in the middle of your screen so where that dot is in the mouse aim you'll notice the plane starts diving now let me show you exactly why Okay, over here is basically what your plane should be doing if you put no input in the plane it should be static Okay, it's literally a seesaw that is obviously unanchored um, I'll show you, I want to talk about this one soon but this is how your plane should be without any input it should be static and stable ok this is the zero fuel weight version ok um, so this would be Airbus's design plane uh, the center of gravity is the center of gravity they use to, um, to use as a reference point for where the center of gravity of the actual plane should be so when you put fuel and um, passengers and cargo this this CG will be the same however a new C your total CG will change because what's happened now is yes the design CG is here however you put weight and you've put passengers all these weights are everywhere so now you need to calculate the new CG and find um, the respective counter to get it back into this position because this is your stable point if the CG the total CG is too far forward you basically get a nose heavy plane which is basically what the A350 currently is because it's nose heavy and you can simply test to make sure that this center of gravity physics actually works in the plane by fly your plane level and then try and get your mouse cursor without any trim try and get your mouse cursor to stay in the center without the plane diving if your plane dives then your plane is of course nose heavy okay now you can trim that of course however what I want to do eventually I'm assuming this will be during the extended autopilot version is I want to work on that center of gravity thing and I want to make that into an auto trim feature so what Airbus does is it basically checks that center of gravity
defines the difference and then inputs that into the trim that's basically what I'm going to do um, to this system and that's pretty important because when you're flying you don't want a plane nose heavy like this why nose heavy isn't good is if you want to flare said aircraft because your nose heavy it's a lot more harder to flare the plane you want this type of plane not this type of plane okay you also don't want a plane that is back heavy and an example of back heavy so this is the actual as I already said this is the M2 A350 that A350 we all are using now so of course it's nose heavy until you trim it let us find I need to find the weight parts okay so here's the weight if I was to put the weight behind the gears okay you can see it's now back heavy you do not want a back heavy plane in aviation the worst type of the worst type of CG error you can ever have is a back heavy plane a back heavy plane spells disaster completely there's videos of back heavy planes I'm sure everyone has seen um, a video of a 747 cargo plane which basically the weight shifted to the back and this plane pretty much stored very quickly because when you go nose heavy stalling is very quick it's very easy to stall if you want any type of error of course you don't want any but if it has to be any type of error you want nose heavy because nose heavy is the least susceptible to stalling than a tail heavy plane as you can see the angle attack of the plane if you used to draw a straight line coming from here to there the angle of attack probably I, if I'm estimating I'm estimating 45 degrees you're stored already that's it that's an instant stall so this as you can see is a very heavy nose plane a good CG plane will look like this a good trimmed plane will replicate this a bad CG plane will replicate this and a not so good CG plane will obviously represent a nose forward um, I need to also explain the nose forward bit if your plane is slightly nose forward I'm going to try and see if I can replicate that nope that's too aft forward too aft forward Too aft forward. Nope. Too aft back. Nope. That's properly balanced. I don't want that. Mm, but I don't want that either. Yeah, trying to get this. This is the hardest one to get to replicate is where it's just slightly the nose forward. Uh, I thought I had it there. This might take like a few good changes. Uh, we nearly had it. We nearly had it. It just needs to be ever so slightly. Yeah, I think that is. Was it? Is it? Hold up. Hmm. No, I don't, I don't think that is. That's that looks fully secure. Let's see that. There we go. Okay. I said
except every year and it starts falling. <laughs> okay, so basically the A350 I'm assuming that's not how they designed it because if it's not falling like that then um, I've never seen the A350 anyway be nose heavy, um, slightly nose heavy anyway it's always been, they've always had it sh in X-Plane they have the um, when it's on the fulcrum. A fulcrum is basically, if you've ever seen a seesaw, it's the middle bit that allows you to rotate left um, up and down. That's what we call a fulcrum. And usually on the plane, a fulcrum is usually you use the, the, the plane gears, the landing gear. If it's double truck, you use the landing gear um, as a reference point and you find the median in front of it if it's double truck of course like an A350 787 you find the median in front of it and that's your fulcrum um, and then you basically will find as you can see the center of gravity your center of gravity is not going to be here because the reason the landing gear are placed here is because the center of gravity is supposed to be here and the plane's supposed to rotate around that point. If your landing gears was too far forward, you would tell, um, you would tell slam, tell strike, whatever you call it. If your landing gear was too far back, you'd never be able to create enough force to climb up because the pivot point is around here for the lift, not around here. Therefore, the gears are the best area to check for center of gravity. Um, anywho, I hope um, at least that helps me anyway understand center of gravity, because it was something I was um, I was pretty much not looking to start today. But then when I realized, oh my days, the A three hundred and fifty sometimes feels so out of trim it really turns out it's actually out of trim completely so that's a great thing to find out because it doesn't mean that a the kit is actually realistic and I'm not just lying to myself um, because if it can take into the fact of the actual sense of gravity that means we're doing something right here and then of course I now need to find a solution to this which is obviously the the new um, pitch trim setting um, of course the A350, A320 they have auto trim to do that work so I'm going to have to find a way to take this information and convert it into pitch trim because as you know on our A350 we do have the horizontal stabilizer that does move up and down realistically so therefore you should have a plane that will auto trim itself and I think that actually should make landings a lot more easier if it's what I'm thinking it should make landings a bit more easier a tad bit more easier because how it was I think the main reason we were having issues with landing in the first place was because the plane um, is nose heavy you have the tendency to have to increase the elevator a lot more to try and compensate for the um, for the lack of flare and I believe that might be one of the reasons why um, sometimes landing with the A350 is a bit more hard not on the actual lining up part but actually the climbing um, to flare modes or the flare um, part of landing um, if you looked at my A350 landing video with the autopilot where the autopilot took us right to the runaway you could see um, when I came in for the landing I was coming in pretty well and probably put too much force to try and get some flare and the plane pretty much went up 
then I have to try and compensate by pushing the elevator down and as you can see that was a slam bounced the plane up put the plane down when I used the reversers that shouldn't happen um, and that's very clear that of course is to do with sense of gravity and that's a great thing because that tells me that this kit again is realistic enough to take into account that if your sense of gravity is poorly handled your plane's gonna fly poorly um, so yeah that's that I hope that's the that looks like it's the end of the video it's been like 50 minutes so thank you for watching this maybe boring video to you if my voice is too low on this video yes it's early morning peace